Hello everyone and welcome to API Days Live India. And as part of the next segment, we have uh, our terrific lineup of speakers coming from different domains across the industry. And first to introduce, I have Vamsi Madhav, Head of Products and Standards at Digi Sehmati. And he will be sharing a very interesting presentation on standardizing financial account aggregation. So Vamsi, uh, would like to invite you on stage uh, and take this session ahead because we have a great community coming together as part of uh, the Indian community, the Indian APIs community. And specifically, I think in this tough period, uh, folks like you coming together and sharing some of the great insights will be really helpful. So uh, once again, very warm welcome to you, Omsi. Thank you very much, Dheeraj. And, uh... A very warm uh, good morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are. Um, appreciate this opportunity. Um, now Dheeraj is from Delhi, but uh, Prashant, the other organizer, is from the home state of Kerala, uh, the home state of, uh, of the folks you see on this image. Um, and I find it quite, um, quite apt because uh, what I represent here is actually an ecosystem of uh, participants in what's called the account aggregator ecosystem. Um, so just a quick, uh, you know, uh, description of uh, who I'm representing here. Uh, so I represent Samati. We are an industry alliance um, and the A ecosystem contains uh, uh, all the account aggregators, there are six of them today, four of them who are operationally licensed, two of them who are in principle licensed. Um, but equally, if not more importantly, uh, the largest banks, NBFCs, uh, fintechs uh, are part of this ecosystem. Uh, Samati was uh, created with the goal of uh, helping drive adoption. Um, helping drive innovation on the back of this very exciting digital layer. Uh, but most importantly, right now, helping orchestrate. And what I'm here to speak about today in, in the next 15 to 18 minutes is uh, about standards and uh, how that's a key part of the orchestration of market players with regulators. Uh, and, and, you know, as I started to think about about standards and, you know, it sounds like a very pompous word and very prescriptive, but really um, it's actually about observing what market players are doing, uh, you know, and, and therefore what I want to speak about today is how in the last three years that I've been a part of this ecosystem, I've seen a very interesting uh, confluence of the regulatory standards, which really gives the initial kickstart to the industry, but then is complemented uh very beautifully by market standards and really my goal is to speak about uh, and give an insight into the set of standards both regulatory and market that drive the experience of citizens uh, as well as the enterprises who are contributing to make this work but first for those of you who are not fully familiar with what this is uh, the best way to describe this uh, if you see my screen is that this is essentially what's called the consent layer of the India stack. Uh, previous speakers, you know, Praveena, Ramesh have spoken about the India stack. Um, this is now the latest layer, which is about enabling uh, citizens of India to feel empowered with uh, data that they have, and at the same time feel protected uh, in terms of privacy and in terms of control of how their data is being used. Right. And so if you do a double click on this consent layer, what it really uh, represents is something like this. Uh, at the center are intermediaries who are really consent managers. Uh, the term account aggregator is merely to reflect that they can connect to multiple systems where your accounts are managed and maintained. Could be your bank account, could be your insurance account, could be a mutual fund account or could be a pension fund account. And then they lay pipelines to consumers of data. Uh, so if you look at the left side, the providers of the financial information or FIPs, uh, please remember that acronym, 
and on the right side, the users of data, which is financial information. Now, the center of all of this is, of course, uh, the bespectacled gentleman on top, uh, who is the citizen. And uh, what's uh, important is at the bottom, you see something called a registry, and I'll speak about that, which is what is critical in terms of enabling all these players to, to look at. Uh, so the simple explanation is that a citizen uh, gives consent uh, you know, in order to get a service from any of the financial information users. And uh, consent managers orchestrate both the uh, distribution of that approved consent as well as the distribution of data between parties. Uh, and so what really should happen is that the data sharing experience of tomorrow, uh, as opposed to today, should be as seamless as what this kind of a you know mock journey ekta is just a, a fictitious account aggregator uh, but it should really be uh, digitally enabled and mobile is a good metaphor for that uh, as a citizen i should be able to see all of the institutions in this network i should be able to link accounts that uh, are, are managed by any of those institutions and then I should be able to manage consents or authorize sharing of, of data. And much like electronic payments today, UPI and so on and so forth, my data is actually traveling in safe, secure, real-time highways across the country. Right? Now, to make this a reality, uh, let me do a quick double click in the next you know, 10 to 14 minutes on how do standards impact each of these players, starting with the citizen. Uh, each of the elements in this table is, is a critical element of the API architecture that is making this happen. So the first and most important thing is consent. Uh, it is revocable and it is given today in how it's uh, phased out to only regulated entities or to oneself, which essentially means as a citizen, I can, of course, view, access my own data using the same architecture. Uh, or I can give data to entities that are eligible and qualified by means of them being regulated by any of the regulators. Of course, we expect that in the years to come, this will be opened up further, but it's important to generate trust by keeping this to regulated entities or by allowing the consumer to get data for herself and, and then share or use as, as she deems fit. We spoke a lot about identity uh, in Ramesh's chat. It's important that while there is an identity layer, as far as this service is concerned, the idea is uh, pseudonymity, right? There is really no need for uh, the FIPs to know a whole lot because they already know the customer. Pseudonymous identity with minimally required verifiable attributes is the key element. Uh, the A's are fundamentally data blind. So the intermediaries themselves cannot you know, store, process, analyze, view any of the data. They can at best do transient storage, uh, but they are fundamentally data blind. Equally importantly and interestingly, the FIPs, the people who provide information, are blind as to where the data is going to. And that's very unique uh, because the FIPs and the FIUs both are, in a sense, uh, you know, uh, parties that have interest in, in, in extending relationship with the same consumer. So the FIPs are blind as to who the FIUs are. So, so the privacy uh, and the security of the whole interaction is preserved. And convenience, last but not the least, from the regulatory standards perspective, follows the UPI-like mechanism. You know, there's a concept of a handle. But, uh, you know, perhaps what's interesting is, unlike UPI, which is largely a mobile, uh, you know, concept today. Uh, in, in these regulations, what's baked in is that the form factor or the interface of the AS could be web, mobile, or even SDKs that are embedded. We'll speak a little bit more about that. Now, these are the regulatory standards, but what are the market standards that are evolving to engender trust and, and get citizens to adopt? And we are at the early stage of this, so a lot of this is, is still being baked and cooked. But one of the key elements that is coming up is trust on the basis of certifications. You know, when you and I, as citizens, interact, we really don't know what's going behind the scenes. But we see that small little logo of a trusted authority or a trusted entity or, or simply a badge. I think it does a lot to give us trust. So certifications to give that guarantee is a market concept. Uh, UX is entirely driven by innovation. How do you get people to understand consent? 
the concept of consent and how do you nudge them to uh, be educated, be aware, at the same time use the rails, right? Notifications, nudges, that's all left to how marketplace, uh, you know, many of you who are in the audience would want to be those can implement. And finally, reliability. You know, it's only as good as repeated word of mouth, good references coming in. And therefore, the perceived SLAs, you know, is my data going fast? Am I actually getting feedback from the FIU saying, hey, we got your data and all is kosher? Uh, that's important, as well as redressing grievances. So if something happens, where do I go to? Uh, so these elements are being actually driven by the community through standards, which, you know, over a period of time, we expect that uh, the hand in glove association between the regulators and the community will codify a lot of these into practices, making it uh, you know, very seamless. So quick, quick peek into what the fundamental concept of consent is. Uh, it's ba based on something called organs principles, uh, you know, revocability, control, granularity, auditability. These are the key, key elements uh, of consent. And that's central to the citizen's experience. Now, let's shift focus to uh, you know, to folks like banks who manage your accounts and mine, what is their role in this? Their role is twofold. One, they are managing all of the data for us. So they have to enable this data sharing. But because they have a responsibility of doing it in a manner which does not, uh, you know, harm us, they have to verify and ensure that uh, the security of this whole process is, is to their uh, satisfaction. So the first important thing is that. Uh, the model that is followed here is what's called a federated identity service model. The A's actually play the significant role of providing credentials on behalf of the FIPs, and that has two benefits. Firstly, the citizen doesn't have to go sign up with each of his bank accounts or insurance accounts to say, hey, I want to subscribe to this service of being able to share data. He does it centrally at uh, any of his chosen A's, and the FIPs rely uh, much like Ramesh spoke about the concept of a relying party, the FIPs rely uh, on the federated identity service provider, which is the AA, which is essentially uh, not doing a KYC or not doing any of those things, but it is supporting pseudonymity of the citizen while verifying certain attributes and identifiers that the FIP defines. So the banks define what they deem as identifiers on the basis of which they can recognize who the individual is, but they depend or rely on the AA to actually collect and verify those attributes. So that's a very important concept for scalability in this whole, in this whole system. The next important concept is secrecy uh, of the data, right? So data security is protected through forward secrecy and end-to-end and -end encryption. Uh, so it's encrypted at source and only the recipient can see it. And it is just for that particular transaction. Uh, you know, there is no there is no key that is a long term key that if if leaked would result in previous data being uh, being leaked or or accessible. The APIs themselves, which uh, which uh, form the uh, basis of all of this conversation, are standardized. These are open APIs designed by Rabbit, which is uh, RBI's IT uh, company, and uh, and Sarmati and all the market participants administer those, implement those, and work closely with the regulator. So there are best practices driven in terms of the architecture, the security, and the change management policies. And lastly, the regulatory standard for the FIPs is that it is not a choice. So you don't have a case where one A ties up with three banks and another A ties up with another set of three banks. The connectivity between FIPs and the AAs is obligatory by default as designed by the regulation. So really, it's the citizen's choice, regardless of which bank uh, that he is banking with, as to which A he wants to use as his or her agent to facilitate this data sharing. Now, what is the market standard that is coming in? This is not obligatory. It's not a regulatory mandate with a date that, you know, such and such bank has to necessarily participate by this date with such and such data. So the scope of participation is market driven. It is it is based on uh, you know what the market feels is good uh, for for the market in general, right? Uh, and so this is a quick snapshot of how uh, how this architecture works. The, the federated identity model is key to scaling this up and 
the A provides the roles of, of the CSP, which is the credential service provider for the initial enrollment, uh, and also as the verifier. So every time a consumer wishes to seek a loan or wishes to seek a PFM service, uh, you know, they will interact not with their bank and, and you know, run around from pillar to post to say, hey, I'm giving you my consent to share my data. They will interact with the A, which will verify their credentials and assert to the FIPs, hey, look, I know this uh, individual. He or she has given her consent. So why don't you just, you know, share the data? And so this trust model between the FIPs and the A's is critical. It is because of this that the A's today are regulated by RBI. And that's a key component of the trust of the architecture that the A's are essentially NBFCs uh, using a new class of licensing called NBFC AA. And that regulation gives the protection to the citizenry that it is indeed, uh, you know, that they can trust them for, for this activity. Right? Now let's look at the PFM providers, you know, various kinds of most important is the benefit from standardization of the data attributes. So the regulator has standardized over 20 different financial information types, which is very unique. Uh, in terms of how open banking uh, has evolved globally. Globally, uh, it has been a very select set of accounts that uh, types of accounts that have been uh, that have been started. Uh, uh, but essentially, the Indian open banking situation has started off with about 20 different financial information types that can actually be standardized. And that means that for uh, the financial information users, the work involved in uh, in parsing different kinds of you know bank statements or in parsing different kinds of financial records is drastically reduced the cost of uh, doing that because now everything is standardized uh, in terms of what attributes will come in right and it's machine readable json format uh, digitally signed and uh, most importantly it is signed at source with uh, no uh, manual intervention Right. So essentially, the trust that this data is essentially coming from the source uh, means that your cost of fraud checks on the data that you're receiving comes down drastically. Uh, again, the APIs are standardized uh, uh, and, and the attributes are, are standardized. Now, what is not standardized by the by the regulator, but standardized by the market customer experience. So obviously, none of us really today know about this. Right. So what we do know is we want a loan or that we want a financial service. So when we start engaging with the FIUs, how do the FIUs seamlessly nudge us to this, uh, you know, to this uh, new way of safe uh, sharing of data? That's where innovation comes in. Uh, and, and secondly, the governance of the data. So while consent gives control and it, uh, it, it lays accountability on the FIUs, to not use data except for the purpose declared in the consent or to not use data beyond the time period declared, uh, they still have to ensure that they comply with data governance standards. And, and we're hoping that uh, as the Personal Data Protection Act comes into play uh, sometime in the near future, a lot of that will be codified. And so there will be regulatory standards for that. Uh, but there are also market standards in the areas of con confidential computing, responsible AI, which will essentially be adopted by the FIUs. Right? So what is the A as the intermediary? How is its life impacted by these standards? The first and most important thing is that the charter of the A is that it can only do consent management. It is fundamentally data blind, but it is allowed to provide on its front end interfaces uh, the decryption of data and, and the ability to provide the consumer a view uh, and other features uh, of her own data, right? So fundamentally, the service is data blind. You cannot run uh, any kind of uh, transactions, uh, you know, as an A, right? So the idea is to keep the interest of the A restricted to uh, the citizen and not have any vested interests governing uh, how it influences the citizen. It is an agent of the citizen, right? 
uh, the APIs and the customer experience, therefore, much like in the case of UPI, as to what should happen in the AA domain uh, is standardized. Again, the actual onboarding procedure, you know, what attributes do you take for the pseudonymous uh, identity collection and issuance of identity? Uh, the relationships between the AA and the FIU, those are the commercial contracts that drive the AA's business model. Uh, and additional features that an AA may want to offer, you know, analysis of consent, privacy features, uh, you know, uh, data sharing features on our own. These are all optional features that the AAs will innovate and, and, and bring to life, right? And, and lastly, there are a set of standards which are market standards that govern all participants. The first of these is an interoperability guarantee. So certification, which today Sarmati as the Alliance runs, provides that interoperability guarantee to all participants. API security, while best practices are codified, the uh, standard as to what claims should be there in, a, in an access token are governed by the market designed by the community. The connectivity to, uh, to the, uh, I'm sorry, that's my, that's my timer going off. I'll just take a minute and, and, and Dheeraj, you can come in with any questions. Uh, the connectivity to the AAs, uh, the discoverability, right? Uh, so if it's obligatory for every FIP to be connected to every AA, and if it's a market practice that a choice of all AAs will be given by all FIUs, it's important that there are no point-to-point -point project integration conversations that happen. So there is a market-designed, market-driven central registry, uh, which again, Sarmati today runs, which offers that public information to participants who are certified to be able to discover endpoints, uh, get public keys for uh, verifying digital signatures and so on and so forth. So this is a market standard. SLAs uh, are, are slowly but surely evolving as a market standard, right, in terms of response times and, and uptime. The economics of it is a market standard. You know, who pays, how much should be paid, how should compensation be driven, for all of the participants, you know, uh, the classic issuer acquired model, this is market driven. And lastly, dispute resolution in terms of uh, not the fact that there must be a dispute resolution framework that's regulatorily mandated, but the mechanics of it. And online dispute resolution as a key concept uh, is slowly but surely becoming a market driven standard. Uh, and hopefully in the future, there'll be APIs that the A ecosystem will adopt for, uh, you know, fully automated dispute resolution. Uh, to happen, right? So where are we today? Um, uh, you know, many of us have been waiting for, for a while for this ecosystem to go live. There's been a lot of activity that's been happening. The first wave of participants in terms of AAs and the FIPs, FIUs are, are ready. Uh, several of these entities are certified that you see on the screen. And uh, hopefully in, in the month of June, you will see the first set of banks going live. Uh, happy to share more information with any of you. You know, please do reach out to me and we are here. Thank you. Thank you so much, Wamsi, for an amazing presentation. And it is so great to see the kind of work as well as uh, Digi Samati is doing. Because I think, uh, from my perspective, uh, APIs is, is making the uh, modern digital world go round. I mean, they are way, they are what bring maps to your fitness, tracking apps, login authentications to your banking applications, and customer service communication to your favorite e-commerce app. And I think APIs are the glue that holds most software together in 2021. And just aligning with the presentation you shared, so uh, since there are uh, a lot many questions to share, but due to the time limitations, we can take that offline. But I think what you shared are really critical in terms of how today's financial industry has uh, multiple lack of solutions amidst the range of choices modern consumers may start feeling that less is more and steadily drift towards account aggregation. So uh, with that note, like I said, uh, we can take the uh, remaining questions offline together, but really appreciate uh, your contribution as well as your time towards this session. And I'm sure that the audience is really excited to interact with you with their questions directly. And they can interact with you on the chat box. Uh, while uh, I just wanted to, again, thank you for being here at API Days Live and sharing tremendous insights with the audience. So thank you thank so you. much once again. Thank you. Thank you.